Good evening. Would like to welcome each of you to this special service of worship this evening. And I'm going to ask if you will stand and then remain standing for the invocation following, but I'm going to open with a uh, uh, invitation of worship as we focus our hearts and minds on the God whom we have gathered to worship this evening. I'd like for you to meditate upon these words that I found from a hymn called The Servant King. From heaven you came, a helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory veiled. Not to be served, but to serve. And give your life that we might live. There in the garden of tears, my heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn, yet not my will, but yours, he said. Come see his hands and his feet, the scars that speak of sacrifice, hands that flung stars into space to cruel nails surrendered. So let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him, each other's needs to prefer. This is our God, the Servant King. He calls us now to follow Him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the Servant King. Please join me as we ask God's blessing on the worship tonight and the celebration tomorrow morning. Holy Father, we thank You so for Your blessings. Father, I thank you that we can come together and worship you and praise you tonight for the work that you have done in the lives of these students who will celebrate a completion and a success tomorrow morning. Father, we give you thanks that we are here tonight as part of a Christ-centered educational community, that we have the opportunity to boldly pro proclaim you in our academic events, in our extracurricular activities, Father, in our actions, may our words and deeds be pleasing unto you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we uh, sing of him worship. It is in your program there, the words for both the ones that we will uh, be singing tonight. And this first one is a declaration of praise simply called Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
First, I will be reading from Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. Attention, Israel, God, our God, God, the one and only. Love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love him with all that's in you. Love him with all you've got. Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you, and then get them inside your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your homes and on your city gates. Next will be from Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Don't suppose for a minute that I have come to demolish the scriptures, either God's law or the prophets. I'm not here to demolish, but to complete. I'm going to put it all together, pull it all together in a vast panorama. God's law is more real and lasting than the stars in the sky and the ground at your feet. Long after stars burn out and earth wears out, God's law will be alive and working. Trivialize even the smallest item in God's law, and you will only have trivialized yourself. But take it seriously. Show the way for others, and you will find honor in the kingdom. Unless you do far better than the Pharisees in the matters of right living, you won't know the first thing about entering the kingdom. This next one you can stay seated for, but it's a um, special song that probably you guys have sang most of your life. Uh, we just put a different spin on it. Um, how many know that, that Jesus truly loves us? Amen. Amen. Each and every one of us, just as we are. And so as we uh, sing this, maybe you can just kind of sit back, relax, and just enjoy the fact, the solace of knowing that He really does love us. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible, it tells me so, little ones to him belong They are weak oh, 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 But he is strong Yes, Jesus loves me loves me He who died Heaven's gates are gonna open wide Oh He will wash away all my sin Oh, 
test me. Thank you very much and thank all of you for being here tonight on this our final worship service in this academic year. It's most appropriate for us to reflect together on the lessons that we've learned in the variety of academic disciplines we've studied here at USW. Many of those disciplines began with the lessons we learned at home from our parents and at our neighborhoods from our schools. Here we've sought to be a Christ-centered educational community. The USW faculty and staff hope that we've prepared our graduates to become model professionals who will represent us all well, committed to servant leadership in their communities. However, even the most appropriately prepared persons do not always fit into their communities without some hiccups. In the field of religious law, Jesus Christ, our Lord, did not enjoy the reputation of being a particularly law-abiding citizen. That may come as a shock to some people. But again and again, Jesus broke what the religious legalists called the law. He didn't observe the ceremonial hand washings that the law mandated. He healed sick people on the Sabbath, although the law specifically forbade that. He defied strict Sabbath work legislation and the stringent property rights laws when he ate fresh grain from a field that he didn't own on the Sabbath. He was eventually condemned and crucified as a religious and civil law breaker. Yet in the passage from the Sermon on the Mount that Kim just read, Jesus seems to be revering the law with more veneration than even a legalistic Pharisee could. He says that not even the least point or the smallest detail of the law should be trivialized or done away with until the end of time. The word picture of the Greek language that from which these words were translated describes Jesus' statements in a very picturesque manner. It says that not an iota or a tittle will pass from the law. The iota in Greek is the smallest letter of the alphabet, and it corresponds with the Hebrew letter yod, which looks almost exactly like an English apostrophe. A tittle is a small flourish on a letter or like a dot over an I. Jesus seems to be laying it on the line that not even the most insignificant point of the law is to be ignored. Could this be the same Jesus who thundered at the pharisaical busybodies that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath when they challenged him for being a lawbreaker? Well, to better understand the situation, it's best to understand, as good students will, that one term can have a number of different definitions. And in Jesus' day, the word law meant many different things. In one sense, the law was strictly the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, it was called. In another sense, the law referred to the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. In a third sense, 
the phrase the law and the prophets meant the whole of scripture. In this sense, it was a kind of a comprehensive description of what we know as the Old Testament. In still another sense, the law was the scribal law. It was in this final meaning of law that it was most common in Jesus' day. The scribal law included thousands of thousands of little bitty rules and regulations and laws governing everything. Passed on by oral tradition, some sort of added on, some dropping away, some made up as, as they went. These laws included an interpretation of the implication and the explication of the law for practically every conceivable situation and then some. Some laws were made up about new laws from some old laws that had gone away. The scribal law eventually became codified in the Mishnah, which was a summary of the Hebrew law written on scrolls, which would make the equivalent of about an 800-page, tightly spaced English book. To help understand and explain the Mishnah, then the Talmud was written. Twelve volumes of the Jerusalem Talmud were prepared and 60 volumes of the Babylonian Talmud. To a legalistic and pharisaical Jew, the keeping of this law required the strict adherence of literally more than a million little bitty legalistic rules and regulations. They regarded these petty rules and regulations as matters of life and death and eternal destiny. Jesus certainly did not mean that not one of these rules was to pass away. As a matter of fact, Jesus violated many of them himself, repeatedly, and he even frequently condemned some of them. Well, what did Jesus mean by saying, I did not come to do away with or to destroy the law, rather I came to fulfill the law and make the teachings of the law come true. Jesus took a fresh look at the law and to do that, he reached back into and beyond the scribal law to the overriding essence of God's covenant. The scripture passage that Kim read to us from Deuteronomy is that simple law, the basis, the foundation. That's the root of the law. The law was not intended to be ends in themselves. Rather, laws were meant to express the general principles contained in God's covenant with us. In the Deuteronomic Code, the principle was clearly and simply stated. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Jesus then quoted this principle along with the principle of loving neighbor as self. And he said that all of the law, all the law that means anything, and the prophets, all that's contained in Scripture, were contained in these basic principles, loving God and loving each other. It's that basic concept for which not even a jot or a tittle will pass away before God has the final say. It's upon this principle of reverence and love for God, feminine and women, that all of the, God, the law of God rests. This is the essence of the law, the whole of the law. It is the essence of the student code of conduct that we here at USW try to enforce with our student body and our faculty and staff. Treat each other with respect and expect to be treated with respect. In many ways, much of the details of the law must be seen as part of God's evolving plan. There's a real danger of trying to stop the process in midstream. 
the beauty of what will result downstream when the flow is complete would never be discovered. Just as a flower bud has a beauty and integrity all its own, so does the law in its developmental stages. But the bud eventually flowers into bloom. With Jesus, the law matured into full bloom. The overriding principles of love for God and fellow man were reinstated and underscored. In our community, in this academic community, we embody that through the principles of servant leadership. The laws were interpreted and followed as they expressed that serving and leading concern, the law of love. When Jesus taught about the law, he understood, underscored continuing between the past and the present. We must never look on life as a kind of battle between the past and the present. The present grows out of the past. Jesus was careful not to say that the old is no good and was now being officially destroyed. Rather, he said that the old has now come to blossom in the new. In an academic community, when we talk about graduation, we use intentionally the word commencement. The word commencement means begin. Out of all the things that our students have studied and learned, when they come to the end, it's just the beginning. Like the ever-evolving process of changing of seasons of the year, the law of God finds its rebirth in a fresh look at the love covenant that was originally communicated. In that sense, even the smallest detail is fulfilled. There's a real danger if we attempt to separate the small detail of the law and make that a central concern of the law. That would be something like saying that a caterpillar's cocoon is the most important element of nature without even considering the beauty of the butterfly. Jesus did not destroy the law, rather he fulfilled it. Jesus brought the law from pharisaical conjecture to loving, acting, serving reality. He changed its negative into positives. The old thou shalt nots became the beatitudes of positive blessing. He changed the narrowness of the law into wide horizons. He changed its shallowness into depth. He redeemed the law. He redeemed the old Sabbath in the new Lord's day. The old Passover in his new table of the Lord's Supper. The old law of sacrifice in his cross. This law of God is a covenant of love between us and him and between us and each other. Thank God that it can govern even the smallest details of our lives. At USW, we seek to emphasize the accepting love of God in the big and small picture of life. As our graduates leave this place, may that law of love go with them. May God grant us each the ability and the willingness to be guided by him in all the details of our lives, big and small, serving in all that we do. Amen. come to a close we're going to sing one more once again it is in your program if you would please stand with us and remain standing for the benediction Sea billows roll.
Father, we just thank you so much for the wonderful evening you've given us. We thank you for the, for the word, the challenge, and the inspiration that you've placed in our hearts. And we thank you for the chance to worship you. Lord, I just pray tonight, Father, that you would just bless and anoint each and every student that is graduating. I pray that you'd be with the faculty and staff and those that are preparing for this commencement. Father, and I ask, Lord, that you would just, just have your anointing just rest upon the whole service. I pray that you be with uh, uh, Brother Scott, Father, and I pray that you touch him as he speaks. And Lord, we just ask your hand to guide us and direct us. And Lord, as these students begin to leave from this place, Father, I pray that you would just bless every endeavor they attempt. And Lord, I pray, Father, for your hand to guide and direct them everywhere that they go. Bless their families and their friends and everything that you have, we give to you today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you. Oh, man. Thanks so much. And thanks for sharing that husband of yours with us.